Hey everyone, this is Lynette Chandler from Thrive Anywhere. Today I'm going to show you how to access and really use the fonts that you bought with glyphs and swashes in your PowerPoint documents, in your PowerPoint planners, in journals, on Windows. Now, if you are a Mac user, I have an almost identical video showing you how to use on Mac process is very similar, but at the same time, quite different. So I'll drop a link here below and you can go watch that one instead. Sometimes when you buy fonts, you go checking out fonts and you get all these huge font bundles and they always look just so gorgeous. They look so pretty. It's all done up so nicely. But when you buy them, you download it, install it on your computer and you try to use them, they look very different and you wonder why they're different. Sometimes it's not so easy to tell. You know that there's something different, but you just can't put your finger on it. Sometimes you know that it's different because the, the swatches aren't there, that you know, be beautiful swatches that you bought it for aren't there and you just simply don't know how to get to them. But I'm gonna show you how. For example, here, I have our site name in this nice font called Always Having Fun. And this font happens to have some really nice swashes that come along with it and also some nice glyphs. Now, swashes like these sometimes are called also font alternates. And these are usually called glyphs. These are extras. They're not really characters, but they're just like nice little finishing touches. And they look like icons, but they're actually not. This font actually doesn't have too many different ones, but it's it will suffice for this particular tutorial. Now, if I go and apply the font here, I'm changing it from Calibri, which is the default in PowerPoint, to always having fun here. Can you see that it's different? It's different from what I have up here. So what's going on, right? That's when we need to go ahead and manually add these swashes and glyphs. So to do that in Windows, we need to open up a little application that's already installed in Windows, thankfully. And it's called Character Map. As you can see, I already have searched for it. If you don't see it here in your recent list, just type Character Map and it will show up. Let's just click Open Character Map. And here you have it. Unfortunately, I can't make this any bigger. It is just the size. And I've already scrolled to the font that we're using. If you're using a different font, you can scroll to a different font and use different fonts here. But let me scroll back to the font that we're using, always having fun. And over here, you can actually see the different things that they have in here. All right, so let's scroll further down. We want to change out the H, and I believe there are different H's. I think this is the H that we have. When you click on it, it just expands. It makes it a little bigger for you to see. So this is the H that we have, but we don't want to use that H. We want to find a different one. What kind of options do we have? I know this font has several maybe like two different sets of H's. Some of them are with umlauts. Okay, there's one type right here, and we can certainly try that. There's another one right here. See that H? That's also different than this, but and dif different than this. So there are different ones that we can really try. And this is the one H that is the one I have up here. Now it's really up to you which one you want to use. Let's just try it since we already have one like this. Let's try doing something different. We'll go with this H, okay? And we click that and we click select characters to copy and then copy. And we head back over here and we control paste here. And it looks really small, doesn't it? Well, that's because it's pasting the size that it was copied from. So we keep source formatting. We do this paste options and keep source formatting. 
and then we just delete and delete and we're back here since we have two h's and i think i want to use the same h over here too i can just go ahead and copy this one and move over here and paste it directly and remove all the spaces next i want to change is the y again let me pull up our character map over here y so there's one type of Y here that's different than this. And let's see, there's a different, another Y that's again, different from that one. Let's change the Y a little bit, do a little bit different from the example that we have up there. Again, we, we click it, click select, and we need to re delete that and click copy. And then over here, we paste it where we want to. Control V. And then here, paste with keep source formatting. Remove all the spaces. Remove the old Y. Now W2 is different here. I want to change it to that one because I like it being wide and, and funky like that. And we go back to our character map. And I can see that it's here. Make sure I delete that. Otherwise, it's going to copy both of it. Select, copy, and remove that. Paste. Keep source formatting. And move it up all the way. And finally, there's the E. Do we want to change the E or do we want to keep it? Let's see what options do we have. We have one up here, which is the E that a uh, very high curve up top and one that is less curvy up top. Let's do that one. Okay, and we delete that. Select, copy, and paste. And make sure we keep source formatting. And remove any spaces. And last of all, I want to add a little flourish, a, well, not flourish, a little glyph, something fancy in the back. And I can put them here in the middle too. And since I have this E the same, maybe I'll just do the same E here as well, just so to keep everything uniform. And maybe I'll put some glyphs in the middle this time. We'll go back to character format. And I see that it has all these different things here. So I have a bunch of hearts like that. I have this, I have that, like a three leaf clover, which I had in the other ones. Let's do this one right here. Okay, we delete that, select and copy and paste. And now I can keep it the size small like this if I want to, or I can just make it the same size as the other, which I think it's for 60. And again, because it works just like a font, you can change the sizes however you want. So if your font changes sizes, this will also change. Let's say we bump it up. I just need to move and see how everything changes. And if I like the heart to be just a little smaller, I can make that just a little smaller just to have this cute little design here like that. And that's how you use it. Glyphs and swashes from your fonts in PowerPoint on Windows. I hope this has been a useful tutorial to help you unlock all the fonts that you've spent so much money on. Thank you for watching.